Here I've got Arturi's newest addition to the Keylab range, it's the Essential 88. The Essential series is the lower cost range, costing about a third of the flagship range. This one is 299 in Toman, whereas the Mark II flagship model is £845. And there are obvious differences, the expensive one is aluminium with wooden side panels, and this one is plastic. They've got different key beds, the Essential doesn't have aftertouch and neither do the drum pads. And you've also got less controls on the surface, and I think the faders are a little shorter on this one. The rear is a much simpler affair as well, with just a MIDI out and USB, plus a single control input that I've been using with a sustain pedal. The more expensive range has got much more connectivity all round, including CV pitch and gate, plus a couple of CV modulation outputs. So if the additional connectivity, the aftertouch and the extra controls aren't of interest to you, if they're a little bit over the top, well, this one has been designed with you in mind. So let's take a quick look at the build quality. Although this has got plastic housing, it doesn't feel cheap or lightweight. It's got a real bit of weight to it. It's not actually that easy to just pick up. I can't get my hands under it there, for example. It's quite a, quite a chunky thing. In fact, it feels a lot weightier than I was expecting. It's nothing like a Korg SV1 or something that's got hammer action. It's definitely uh, in the portable camp. The keys on this are semi-weighted and they feel a little bit like my other synths really. It's hard to describe, but it takes six pound coins and 13 20 pence pieces to fully depress them. And that's around 100 grams. My SV1 takes a little less to fully depress, but it does have that typical sort of flick back that you get from hammer action keyboards that this doesn't. And the play is around 12.7 millimeters, which is about the same as the SV1. And the black keys are a similar width. And you're not gonna get that level of detail from an AI review. But all in all, it feels fine. It's not quite as nice as my OBX8 or my Profit 5, but it doesn't feel bad. Uh, it feels a lot better than some of my synths. Definitely much better than most of my vintage synths. So yeah, difficult way of describing something that, you know, there's no issues with it whatsoever. So my first impressions are that it has a lot more presence than I was expecting. It's a bit weightier than I was expecting. And for a small studio setup, it's a great little synth, well, a great big keyboard. And it comes with plenty of bundled software. If we go into their website, we get Analog Lab Pro, Ableton Live Lite, plus a couple of pianos. This one here, the Model D, is a grand piano and the gentleman's an upright from Native Instruments. And you get a couple of months of subscription to Loop Cloud, plus a subscription to Melodics to help you become a better musician. And I guess the most important of these really is Analog Lab Pro. This is Analog Lab V that I've got on mine. I don't know the difference between V and Pro, to be honest, but the big thing about it is the way it integrates with the software. We can use this knob here to select the patches. So you can see that's changing patches. Let's load classic strings. And if you look on the top right here, you can see that that's from the CS80. If we click on that, if you've got them installed, you can open it within Analog Lab and you can change whatever parameters you like. But if you don't, you make use of these controllers here. So if we look down at the bottom of the screen, the faders and the knobs are all assigned to various macros and parameters. The controls are set on a patch by patch basis, so they're not the same for everything. Um, but what you do get is access to enough parameters to make a sound that you quite like fit in a mix. You can also use these contextual buttons to flick through the patches. And we can look at different types as well. We don't have to flick through every single one of the 6,000 instruments we've got in here, or the 6,000 patches. So let's go to, I don't know, let's go to sequences. What sort of sequence? Arpeggio, melodic sequence, a noise sequence. Let's go to melodic. Maybe let's look for a piano. So types, let's look for a piano. There we go. Load that. That's pretty simple, but it's really nice to be able to have access to all that from the controller itself rather than having to refer to, uh, to either of your computer screens. Let's knock it down an octave so we can get it on the camera. So even though we've got 88 keys, we have got octave up and down. Any opportunity to play a bit of Alison Limery. If you want to control all the soft synths or hardware, you can use this MIDI control center software. And this automatically recognizes what you've got connected and you can have up to six different 
user programs and on these programs we select the controller we can output a cc or nrpn change the controller change the mode of the knob if it's absolute or if it's relative like catch-up modes select specific midi channels and then we've got minimum and maximum values as well and we've got this for the pads they're mapped to different notes at the minute so if i play the pads although we've only got eight there we can go upper bank And looking in here, we don't have to play notes with them. We can send CC messages. So they're not just limited to playing drums. You can use them to turn on and off various functions on your soft synths, perhaps, or send a specific MIDI CC values. If you wanted um, to go to a definite filter value, for example, you could hit one of those and send a specific filter value to CC74, something like that. And you can change the color, but we're not going to see that in this light. Um, we can toggle things on and off, and there's the CC value. And the same goes for the sort of door dedicated transport buttons as well. We come into here, if we look at the stop button, we can give it a CC value. We could toggle something on and off, or we could change what it does in the door. I'm gonna have to get myself a blind or something because that's really annoying, but it only happens about once a year when the sun's at a specific height at a specific time between two trees. But yeah, it's uh, infuriating today. So here it is in Logic. If I go to Control Surfaces and Setup, put it down there, and then we'll play, stop, record, toggle on and off the cycle, stop, fast forward, rewind, and the knobs and faders become channel volume and pan. So we select the channel with the main knob, one channel on there, and if I wiggle these, you can see and changing the volume, changing the pan. And it works in blocks of eight. So if you're on track one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or eight, these will go one to eight. If we go to track nine, for example, these are now controlling tracks nine to 17. If you were wondering how it did more than eight, and track nine is always the main volume. Let's go back up to track one. Got the profit in there, hit select. And then to control that synth, we'll just go back to the Artoria program. And these are generally set similar for all the soft synths. So this is generally the cutoff, the resonance, envelope one, envelope two, main volume, is that? On, the, on this one, it's the noise, oscillator one level, oscillator two level. And if we select another track, what well, we got this one. This has got the Juno 6 V on it, so go back to control the synth again, and there we can see envelope, cut off, resonance. They're slightly different for each of the synths, and if they don't suit you, you can just obviously learn the MIDI CC and leave it at this MIDI CC, or you can go into the MIDI control center software and change it for however you want. So if you've got soft synth that requires a specific CC, you can just set it up as a new user program. But what I've been doing with it is using it with this Nymphus because the Nymphus sits very, very nicely right up on the edge of this, perfect size. And it gives me access to loads of different parameters that you can't access without diving into the menus on the Nymphus, which is really quite cool. So let's just take a very quick look at using it with some hardware. I load in the hardware program, we go to Nymphus, and if we look at MIDI control center, I've set all these MIDI CCs according to the Nymphus manual. So on the Nymphus, you have to press shift to access all these parameters across the top, like the main BCA ADSR envelope. So this program allows me to access all the parameters that I'd like to tweak that are just a little bit menu-y in there. So. LFO2 speed, for example, or the ADSR, or the reverb. All of which, as I say, you have to dive into this menu system here or press shift. So it just makes life a bit easier. But um, 
really useful to use with other kit. And I don't think I see many people actually using these things in these videos with hardware. But it doesn't have to be synth parameters on your synths either. Obviously, this is me controlling the internal mixer on the C clavier regen. So using the controls like a mixer rather than for the synth parameters. And that was on the Essential 49, not on this one. I've not had the chance to do it yet, but just show you it's an idea. So what else have we got on here? Well, we've got hold functions, so. We've got chords as well. I've actually got a chord on the Nymphas at the minute, so I'll take that chord off, I think. So if we go into chord mode, long press to edit, go to the users or the presets, on the presets we've got. Twelve presets, but having the user ones is really handy. We've also got an ARP mode. Again, on press to edit, and we've got various functions. A couple of pages there of functions. So we've got on or off modes. We've got uh, let's go to the different modes. Dial up, inclusive, exclusive, random order. Time scales, gates, what else? Swing, the rate, that's the BPM. Sync, and the number of octaves. So quite comprehensive. We can also add a second part. So we hit part, or long press to edit, really. And then we can add part two. So let's look at adding something there. Let's go to strings, for example. We go OK. Oh, strings. OK. And let's let's just load that one. Oh, we'll string four, one. Hit replace part two. OK. And now we've got the sin rise and the strings. And if we look at the app, we've got sin rise and strings. We're editing both parts at the minute. It's little blue. When it's orange, we're editing part one, and when it's green, we're editing part two or controlling it. So this will be the cutoff. But if we just want to edit the cutoff on one of them, well, let's try the other one. And you'll notice at the bottom of the app here, we've got the orange and the green lines crossing all the keys. And that's because we've got it in sort of multi-mode. So if we wanted to change that, hold the part button and put a split point in. Now we can see we've got a split point at C3. And just change that to where you like, as you can see that moving on the app as well. And if we want to get rid of that, just take away part 2x. Gone, yes, and we're back to just the sin rise, although this is showing us the last part that we loaded, not the part that's playing, which is a bit weird. In fact, that's a sound, I think, from the mini freak that I made in the patch bank. Nice. Very much like a Juno tone, isn't it? Well, that is finally it. I think I've covered just about everything I can. If you're in the market for an 88 key controller that doesn't have aftertouch or isn't um, piano action, this is definitely worth checking out. It's a really decent little or big thing. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, not taking the um, overexposure into account the sun doing mad things on a February morning in Liverpool. Um, but if you did enjoy it, do think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me over on Patreon. I've got patches, I've got samples, I've got tutorials, or take a look at my Starsky car website as well. There's stuff to buy and there's free stuff, but it's nice if you just pick up a couple of the really cheap bits and bobs on there, some sample packs, whatever. It all really does help to support the channel. And thanks very much for staying to the very end, and I will see you next time.